Steve Mason has recently taken over as executive director of Gleeds London region. Steve was one of the founders of Mace's cost consulting business and worked on major projects like the London 2012 Aquatic Centre and British Lands 5 Broadgate scheme. So Steve, perhaps you can tell me uh, what your role at Gleeds involves? Yeah, so, so I joined Gleeds in, in February this year with an aim to grow the business and uh, re-establish its position as one of the uh, leading consultants uh, in the London marketplace. That means uh, focusing on some new sectors, broadening the, the breadth of sectors that we work in, still f with a big focus on residential and commercial where we're particularly strong, uh, but we need to have a bit of a wider a wider base to, to enable us and, and facilitate us doubling in size over the next uh, two to three years. So the, the ambition for me and for the business is that uh, Gleeds is the consultant of choice in the London marketplace across all sectors. So you're pretty optimistic about London's economy in the future then? Very confident. London's a great city. I've been to a lot of cities in the world and for me London London is the, the, the greatest city in the world. And, you know, it's uh, arguably one of the top two financial centres in the globe. Uh, it attracts the best people, the best companies. So I'm very confident that we're, we're going to achieve those targets. And with a brand like Lee's that's been around for, for so many years with the heritage that it's got, the, the opportunities uh, are there to, to, to enable me to achieve the business goals and, and my own personal goals. We're going through a tricky period for the industry at the moment with the uncertainty of the post-Brexit economy, inflation, supply issues and talk of uh, recession. I mean, how do you see the next couple of years? I'm quite optimistic about it all. We've, we've been talking about a slowdown uh, since the Brexit vote in what, 2016 now. And uh, you know, I've had many conversations with colleagues and teams about the slowdown next year, and then the slowdown the next year. And we, as I say, we've been we've been having this discussion for some some five years or so, and it's not really manifested itself in the way that we all thought it would. And each year seems to bring bring along another challenge. You know, now we've sort of come out of um, the pandemic. We now have the challenges of of supply, as you say, and. Um, resource challenges and of course uh, the terrible events that are going on in Ukraine but um, I'm pretty I'm, I'm confident uh, and optimistic that next year the, the business the marketplace the London market will continue to grow it might slow down a little bit but actually at the moment uh, I think taking a little bit of heat out of the market may not be a bad thing because we are we, we are struggling uh, I think in, in the marketplace generally to uh, satisfy the level of demand that is out there, and I mean that across all of the supply chain uh, in resources, um, you know, material costs and supply. We, we know why they are getting pushed up. But as I say, within the market, the consultants' marketplace, um, you know, we there, there is there are challenges out there, as we know, trying to resource uh, the full pipeline of opportunities. So, taking the heat out a little bit might not necessarily be a bad thing for us. But it also provides great opportunities for the industry, doesn't it? Yeah, great opportunities and it's exciting times because it's it's new. You know, I've come I grew up in an organization which was always looking for different ways of doing things. And um, you know, it's refreshing for me coming to somewhere like Leeds, uh, where they've got exactly the same ambitions. As I say, there there are there are challenges out there in the marketplace with the sustainability and the environment, but our industry, the construction industry, has got a great track record for finding new solutions, and I'm I'm confident we'll, we'll get there. It's, it's it's interesting at the moment with when we talk about energy and the energy prices at the moment, and whilst it's a, not a great thing in respect to people struggling in respect of the costs, I think what it will be doing is focusing all our attention on perhaps being a little bit more careful on on how we do things and whether we choose to drive everywhere or or walk or cycle or turn the lights off in, in, in the kids' bedrooms and all that kind of stuff. So I think that it's uh, a, a great opportunity for us now to have a bit of refocus. Um, but yeah, the, when, when we start looking at some of the opportunities uh, presented to us by the nature of the way we redevelop our buildings and whether we look at new build now as opposed to repurposing existing buildings, um, I say it's, it's a great time to pull on the, the talent in our industry to come up with new solutions. So you would support the idea of uh, retrofit first, at least look at yes. buildings to see if they can be yes. reused rather than 
Demolished. Most definitely. I mean, I'm lucky enough to be working with a client of ours at 105 Victoria Street, uh, and you know that's uh, uh, that building is obviously it's uh, reusing uh, parts of the existing building to make sure that we can actually keep uh, uh, make the building that much more sustainable. Um, it's something I did as I say uh, previously working with some other clients as well. So, so most definitely, it's um, I think there's a passion within this business to, to focus on it, and we know there's a passion within our industry, particularly with the young people coming through. You know, young people coming to our industry are very passionate about it, and can teach um, uh, some of us that have been around a few more years to uh, some, some, some new tricks, which is good. So, uh, tell me about some of the big projects you're working on at the moment. Coming, coming into this organisation, one of the attractions for me with, with Glees um, was the, the major projects they work on. You know, we've been working down at One Nine Elms, which has been you know, great, you know, sort of some tall buildings experience, working down at Chelsea Barracks. We've recently picked up a, a, a large um, uh, hospitality project um, uh, in the West End, uh, which I can't mention the name of, but I, I would like to. Um, but the most exciting thing for me at the moment within our business is actually the energy in looking at some of the new sectors. You know, we're quite well established on residential and commercial. Uh, I'd like to think we're one of a handful of uh, organisations, consultants in London that can deal with some of the, the, the tall buildings. But when I look at the energy now of our business, looking at, say, some of those new sectors, focusing on the growing health sector, focusing on life sciences, um, uh, we're starting to look at some of the data centres. Um, that's the piece that excites me because it's, say, it's, it enables me to offer some level of new contribution, if you like, to making this business uh, grow and get back to where we want it to be in the London marketplace. I should add to that, you know, the, the depth of capability this business has globally and in the UK is, 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 is significant. You asked me earlier about the London market and my focus on the London market. What, what is quite refreshing is that we, we, we have pockets of expertise around the UK in different offices uh, which we, we are able to draw on and use their expertise in some of the sectors that might be quite new to us in London. You know, the leisure sector, for example, we, we've got a team in the Midlands that specialises in, in leisure, which is uh, uh, helping us uh, break into to the leisure sector uh, in, in London. So, as I say, it's, it's nice having the ability to do that within an organisation the size of, uh, of Glees. How realistic do you think the Mayor's sustainability targets are? requiring, uh, for instance, over 2 million homes to be properly insulated, 2.2 million heat pumps in operation in London by 2030. I mean, can the industry really deliver at that sort of pace? I think it's an admirable target. I think we will have some challenges from a resource perspective. Uh, I think that uh, it's, you know, the, the targets that are set, I think, are the right targets. But like I say, I think the challenge we've had, particularly now as uh, time has moved on, whether we've got the depth of resource and capability in that resource, as well as actually getting the materials and the kit to actually undertake that work in the timescale that we have, is going to be some challenge. You know, in a market at the moment that, that remains quite heated, it's challenging to find uh, resource on uh, some of the mainstream projects. Therefore, finding the right skilled expertise to, to do some of these projects is not not going to be easy. I would also add though, with that, as I said uh, earlier, I think the idea that we will be changing the way possibly that we live so we use less energy as well as insulate against it, is, it it's a balance between all those things. I think within, you know, within the, the, the targets that were set about the amount of travel around, you know, around, around London, uh, I think that's a key part of it with, with regard to the amount of emissions that we use. So I think all of us are going to be thinking quite a lot more now about what we spend in respect of energy usage because of the, both the environment but the fact that it is now starting to hit pretty much most people in their pocket as well. So there's a balance. But will we achieve it? As I say, uh, there will be some, some limits, I think, by, by the, the, uh, the ability of our, our industry to provide the resource to react and deliver it. Shouldn't the construction industry be coming together more effectively to help deal with this? Yeah, but I think, and I think with, with new construction, 
Uh, I think that there's lots of clever ideas out at the moment, modern methods of construction, to build things quicker, more sustainably, and, and I think the, 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 the industry has reacted well to that. I think when it comes to retrofitting housing and insulating housing, which is, I think, uh, a much more difficult challenge to achieve, uh, particularly with some of the age of some of the, the properties we'll be talking about in, in London in particular. So, so there's, there's the challenge, I think. I mean, it needs a really coordinated response, doesn't it? I think at the moment it, the, the, the biggest challenge is going to be resource for, for some of the, the, the types of um, solutions that you've, you've mentioned, you know, re-insulating um, um, ageing properties, for example. As I say, that, that's the very re- resource-focused uh, activity and it does come back to, you know, from um, irrespective of what people's views on Brexit, I suppose one of the biggest challenges at the moment is resource, not just in construction, let's be fair, everyone's going on holiday and you can see all the challenges. Um, we need to find a solution to that um, and until we do as I think it will continue to have an impact uh, on, on how much of uh, those targets we're going to be able to deliver you know I, I think our, our industry at the moment is is very busy you know is, which is why you know we, you asked me earlier about uh, potential slowdowns you know that slowdown uh, ironically is a uh, is a supply led it's not a demand led as such the demand is still there but because of the increasing cost of materials and the limits on supply it's putting some challenges against the deliverability of, of schemes because of the, the the cost level they're currently at until we, we start addressing some of that in respect of the resource piece as well as the material piece we'll continue to have challenges so we need to come up with a solution to that you mentioned mmc do you think it's it got the momentum that it really should have Probably not. Um, I, th- I mean, again, I've seen some, when you look at um, the solutions that work well and you go to student accommodation, it's working well. General sort of uh, large residential developments, we talk about toilet pods, that kind of thing, it's working well. I think we, sh- it should, we should be doing more. I, I would agree. I don't, I don't think it's taken off as, as quite as well as we, we would have thought. I know there are some, some cl- clever solutions that are out there, but I, do, I still think... We uh, too often you come up against the the challenge that the the initial capital cost possibly is a level where it's making the overall development value less attractive, and as a result, we we we're perhaps going for solutions which aren't those cutting edge MMC modular solutions. Uh, so I still think there's a challenge there. I do think we're improving. Though. I think it is getting better. Um, as I say, I know that. Um, some of the clever construction organisations out there are, are, are coming up with uh, uh, some, some solutions which are going to give that, that, that speed, off-site prefabrication, uh, much more speed on-site, you know, reducing that time on-site, reduces cost, reduces programme, all that kind of good stuff. So do, do you think the industry has responded adequately to Mark Farmer's report, uh, modernise or die? I think we're on the journey, yeah. I think we were probably all on that journey before Mark's report. I think it's, uh, you know, we, th- there's, a, there's a lot of different strands to that decision about modernising, whether that be the construction solutions, whether that be to how we all operate ourselves, digital solutions, um, and I think we're all on that journey. But it all, it all takes time, and I think one of the key elements to that is making sure that we... Uh, continue to invest and continue to attract young people into our industry to ensure that long term when some of us do end up leaving the industry um, we've, we've actually got that pipeline of uh, young professionals coming through and I still think we need to do more on uh, letting young people know how wonderful our industry is. I think most of us that have been in the industry a long time we we love it. It's a great. It's a great job to work in. You know, it's uh, it's flexible. No days or very few days are ever the same. We get the opportunity to go out, look at construction projects, look at things tangible, something being produced. You know, something that uh, leaves something which is a lasting legacy, if you like. Not every industry does that. I think we're 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 all working harder now to bring young people in, but it does feel like there was a, a almost like a a lost decade uh, of bringing good young people into our industry. If things do slow down, you know, I do hope that 
organisations don't start limiting on the numbers of apprentices and graduates they bring in because from my experience over the last 30 odd years when that does happen you always look back and regret it. So um, I'm very much aligned with what Mark's suggested but I say part of it's people, part of it is tools, part of it is systems, part of it is the construction solutions and the technology. But without those young people coming in you don't get it. Thank you very much. Thank you.